Well, everyone, we have Intel's new Enthusiast CPU pricing. And wow, are things different. We also have some information on the thermal interface used on these chips. So stay tuned. Welcome back to GamerMeld. And also, welcome to GamerMeld's 100th episode. It's funny, I didn't even notice it until King Christo, uh, King Christo, anyway, a user pointed it out at the GamerMeld Discord server. So thanks so much for noticing. And thank you to everyone who's followed the channel. I'm at awe every day at how quickly it's growing, and I honestly can't thank everyone enough. Okay, so let's get into the news. Intel has officially announced the pricing for their upcoming Enthusiast line of processors, and it's actually not bad. It, kind of. What I'm going to do is go through each CPU and just kind of discuss a few things for each one. So first up, the new processors are called the Core X family of CPUs, and the first CPU in the lineup is the i5-7640X. It's actually your traditional i5 with four cores and four threads running at a base clock of 4 GHz and a boost of 4.2 GHz. It's set to run dual channel DDR4 at 2666 and comes in at $242. Really, I'm a little disappointed in the lack of budging in price for the lower model, especially with AMD pulling 12 threads at similar prices. I'd like to see either lower prices for four threads or simply more threads. Next up is the i7-7740X, and it runs at 4 cores and 8 threads with a base clock of 4.3 GHz for $339. Another example of them staying to a similar price of current Intel offerings. Honestly, I'm not sure why these are parts in the Enthusiast line, considering they don't seem to be much beyond what the consumer side has, and actually lacks the integrated GPU. I know outlets are suggesting it's a cheaper way to get into the Enthusiast line and upgrade later, but there's no guarantee there won't be a whole new set of CPUs out by the time you're ready to buy a new CPU. Oh well, I guess. At least the option is there. Now, where it starts to get interesting is when we move up to 6 cores and 12 threads. The new 7800X, which is a 6 core, 3.5 GHz base clock and a 4 GHz boost. This puts it similar performance-wise to the 6850K with more of a direct generational update to the 6800K. The newest CPU comes in at $389, which is a small price drop from the original price of the 6800K, which is $434, and an even higher dip when compared to the 6850K's $617. Next, we move to the 8-core, 16-thread CPU, and this is where things really take a sharp turn. While it takes quite a long time to fabricate new CPUs, sockets, etc., it's doubtful Intel wasn't already planning on this launch prior to Ryzen, but it certainly seems their pricing has at least been greatly influenced by AMD's newest chips. The i7-7820X is an 8-core, 16-thread CPU with a base clock at 3.6 GHz and a boost of 4.5. The pricing, however, is a much more reasonable $599. Of course, Benchmarks will tell how reasonable this really is when compared to, say, an overclocked Ryzen 1700. Either way, it's a stark difference from the 6900K's $1,089 original price point. I certainly think it's clear AMD had quite an impact on Intel's top tier at the very least. The next CPU in Intel's announcement is their 10-core 20-thread i9. That's right. The i9 moniker is real. The i9-7900X CPU comes with a base clock of 3.3 GHz and a boost up to 4.5 GHz. It also comes with 13.75 MB of L3 cache, but is priced at a pretty hard to swallow $1,000 US dollars. With that said, it's still far better than last year's 10 core for $1,723. The question is whether AMD can be at least around the $1,000 price tag on their 16 core thread ripper. That would certainly not be great for Intel. After 10 cores, the Intel X299 platform will be moving all the way up in 2 core increments to 18 cores, although those are quote coming soon. And while I'm not sure where they're getting it from, video cards have shown off pricing for said 18 core model to be $2,000, with the 16 core at $1,699, the 14 core at $1,399, and 12 core at $1,199. They stated to have gotten the 18 core from Intel, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's truth. Either way, the cost and specs for CPUs up to 10 cores is a press release, so these are coming straight from Intel. Now, the last bit of news regarding Intel's newest Skylake X and KB Lake X CPUs is somewhat disheartening. As the Raider, a pretty well-known overclocker, apparently got his hands on some of these new CPUs and found they apparently all use TIM instead of soldering the IHS. For those who don't know, thermal paste, doesn't pull off the heat nearly as well as actually soldering the heat spreader to the CPU. In the past, Intel's top enthusiast line used solder, but apparently none of the new Core X CPUs do. Now, one thing I believe many forget to discuss when talking Tim is D-Raider's article on it. 
I'll link it below, but basically there can be reasons for Intel to use Tim. D Raider found that solder is actually damaged during intense thermal cycling, which causes voids and micro cracks that are worse the smaller a die gets. According to D Raider, the bigger enthusiast chips could still use solder, but Tim, especially in smaller dies, is simply better for longer performance. Now, why is AMD able to continue soldering their CPUs if this is true? I'm honestly not sure, but I thought I'd at least share. So back to Core X. Not only does it use Tim, but apparently on Skylake dies, the stack PCB stops anyone from delitting it with current tools. So that's fun. Personally though, I will say I don't suggest delitting as I don't think the risk are worth the benefit. But that's just my opinion. So what do you think of Intel's newest Core X CPUs? Are you impressed? Or has AMD's pricing outclassed even Intel's newest offerings? Let me know in the comments below. And while that ends today's news, don't forget to check me out on Patreon. You can become a patron for as little as $2 a month to help out the channel. And for just $5 a month, you get a special patron role in the new GamerMail Discord server. So definitely make sure to check that out. Both the Patreon and Discord server links will be in the description. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggested video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.